The iPhone 14 Pro Max is Apple's newest top-of-the-line flagship phone of 2022. Today I'll be unboxing and do a complete review of the camera and other new features Apple's new flagship has to offer. So stay tuned and don't forget to like and subscribe as it means a lot to me as a creator. Thank you and enjoy my content. After opening the box, we immediately see the humongous new camera bump and sensor. So the iPhone 14 Pro Max also has the long-awaited 48 megapixel sensor that we will dive into later on. I got the space black color which has a similar back glass color as the 13 Pro Max graphite color but has a darker and much nicer stainless steel side bumper. Inside the box we get the USB-C to lightning cable, documentation along with a SIM ejector tool with only one Apple seeker. Boo Apple Boo, come on we used to have two, now we only got one. Now for the second most satisfying peel. Now to turn on and transfer my old iPhone to the new one. Uh, if you wanna see the complete process I will make a separate video for that because it's quite long. But it is easy to do. This is my first time having a MagSafe iPhone, so let's test out the Moft MagSafe wallet. And it is amazing how strong the magnets are, and it also looks very good. This is also the first iPhone I have that has the Pro Motion display that can go up to 120Hz and go down as low as 1Hz for the always on display. The other Pro Motion device that I have is the MacBook Pro M1 Pro 16 inch. Once I use the ProMotion display, I cannot go back to the 60Hz panel. For the screen brightness, it's also amazing it can go up to 2000 nits when outdoors with the auto brightness on. Speakers on this device is also amazing and very rich for a smartphone. The 14 Pro Max is also equipped with Apple's newest A16 Bionic chip and it also uses the 4 nanometer processors and it is very efficient and stays cooler than the A15 Bionic chip. Here I got the 512GB model to store my photos and videos for my content. Performance is also very good and a week after I still get no lag whatsoever. It also has 6GB of RAM which also has an awesome RAM management from iOS and when I open apps from yesterday sometimes it's still open. Next, we have the Pro model only feature which is the dynamic island. So for 5 years since the iPhone 10, Apple has been using the notch design every year until now. Here I'll show you what it's like opening the music app and the timer app at once. Now you can multitask speed without going in and out of apps. You can long press to show the menus, control the music or the clock app. You can also swipe to the left or the right to hide and show the dynamic island. We also have the new always on display which has a mixed review because some people say it is too distracting because of how bright it is. The screen goes down to 1Hz and shows you the time and notification. For me, I turned the setting off because even back then when I used the Android, I never turned the always on display on. For the display, I have to say I love the dynamic island compared to the notch which doesn't serve any function even though some people feel that the island is more distracting but for me personally it's much less distracting than the notch as for the us model the sim slot is not available anymore and they have transitioned to the e-sim but i live outside of the us so i got the dual sim model thank goodness for that because i travel often now for the in-depth camera review so on the left we have the iPhone 14 Pro Max with the one time zoom and the 12 megapixel and on the right is the Pro model only 48 megapixel Pro RAW photo. We can see in the zoomed in photo on the right it's much more clearer there's no artifacts and it's very very sharp. But the caveat is the size is very big. The normal one is only at 2 megabytes and the DNG which is the Pro RAW file is at 72. We can see the second picture zoomed in and you can still see that it retains the detail and less sharpening but the size is 3 megabytes compared to 80 megabytes. These are a few shots I took using the zooms as stated in the video.
For me, I like taking macro shots. Either it's a flower or insect or animal. So using the iPhone 14 Pro Max macro mode, it's very, very amazing. You can see the details as I zoom in and it can take shots very, very close using the telephoto lens. Next is the nighttime shots that I took on my garden. And you can see the macro, even though it looks good, but if you zoom in, it, it gets a little blurred out. These are also the night shots. I think it's very amazing how bright the picture turned out to be. And it's a good thing because I take a lot of night pictures. I can also change the settings to 1 second shutter speed which you can see on the screen. It is a little brighter, you can see more details, but it kinda looks over sharpened, I guess. Now for the video comparison. So the new iPhone 14 series has a action mode which they proudly present in the keynote and I think it's an amazing feature. Even though there's one disadvantage, uh, it needs a lot of light. And there's a new 4K 30fps cinematic mode, which is also amazing. The autofocus and the edge blur is very, very good. Now I am comparing my iPhone 10 with the iPhone 14 Pro Max during nighttime. And you can see the new stabilization without the action mode is also amazing. You can also see that it's much brighter and I did not edit any of these images. It came out like this. And as you can see, with the better stabilization and the better exposure and the bigger sensor, you can see the difference. So that's it for my unboxing and review. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, share and subscribe and see you in my next one.